You mentioned in terms of success principles, attitude, this business of attitude. 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 It takes in the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you act. I'd have a difficult time really uh, explaining attitude right just in a conversation. I use a board in the seminar, and, uh, well, I did a, a, an attitude seminar last night. We spent three hours dealing with that one subject, you know, so to do it here in three minutes, I haven't... I, I can do it. I haven't learned how yet. Okay. Let's put it that way. I, I recognize it's difficult because we talk... You have to have a winning attitude, though, Tom. Okay. In human relations, we talk about the toughest thing with managing people. The toughest thing to deal with is their attitude. That's right. That, that, that's almost impossible and that's the one to thing where management person, falls down. But we can't change people's attitudes. Well, nobody can change another person's attitude. And the only attitude we can change is our own. But you see, if management have the idea it's their attitude and we can't do anything about it, then they're not going to do anything about it. But if management arrive at the conclusion, yes, it is attitude, and let's teach the people something about attitude. Let's teach them something about themselves. Let's make them realize that they're worth something, that they're valuable, that the greatest resource we've got. Companies spend about 65% of every dollar that comes in goes back out on employees and wages and benefits, and yet management knows less about employees than anything else. They know more about the gadgets and the widgets than they do about the people. Okay, so your suggestion is we develop a winning attitude. Absolutely. Can you define that for me, first of all? What is a winning attitude? Well, if we can understand, let me digress for a second. The whole universe operates by laws, and there's a law of opposites. It's called the law of polarity. Everything has its opposite. There's a right and a left side. Mm -hmm. There's a front and a back, an up and a down, a hot and a cold, positive and negative, yin okay. the yang. You know, well, you can think negative or you can think positive, but you can't think both at the same time. You're only going to think one way at the same at the one time. And we have to train our mind to think or look for the positive or the good in things. There's good in everything. There's no such thing as no good. Car broke down on the way over to the station. There's something good about it. There's something good about it. Now you may have to look to find out what it is. Okay. Yeah. But there's something good in everything. There has to be a positive and a negative for anything to exist. The law of, there's a law of gender that decrees that science understands it. It's taught in science. Okay. Well, once we understand that there's these, this law of opposites, there's negative thoughts or positive thoughts. As the thought energy flows into our mind, we decide what we're going to think. A person's out of work. They can decide to think I can't find a job, but they can decide to think I can. If they're thinking I'm going to find one, then they'll start attracting a train of thought to them, figuring out how to find it. You really have to understand how your conscious and your subconscious mind works in relation to your body or your physical world to understand attitude. Attitude should be taught as a subject in school ahead of reading, writing, arithmetic, or anything else. Because it's a person's attitude that's going to determine the marks they get. If you want another amazing clip of a young Bob Proctor, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. The secret is, I once read in a book where it said, when you read a good book through mm -hmm. the second time, you don't see something in it that you didn't see before. You see something in yourself 